see y'all. Uh, we won't meet next weekend. Memorial Day. We all. And uh, we just need to work. I'll work with y'all individually Wednesday, 7.30 after class. You probably won't need to do like a whole makeup class like you did last time. But if anybody wants to do some extra work, sit on them. We'll stuff the leaf. And then we'll be off next week because it's part of Solus. Does everybody have a copy of Solus? Yeah, ready? Yep. You get Thirty of those. Very good. All right. 
Find this. Ready? <coughs> From here. I'm going to block and count it. Now watch the movement closely. Block, arms in tight, there's tension here, blade is out. Coming back up to counter. That's it striking. Oh, let's see if I'm going to pull back. Okay. I found myself using this little knives to cut parts of the this week. <coughs> and I wasn't thinking I was kind of like pushing. It's very difficult. I simply grew and cut completely through the cardboard like butter. So, this is what we're doing here. Blocking, countering, straight diagonal cut, bring the forehead, put it in the head. Ready? And block, cut. And ready position. Off guard, and block, cut. Good, ready position. Block, cut. And ready position, block, cut. And inside, ready? Okay, stay. Always have that right foot forward. Your arm and left hand forward. And block into the other side now. Ready? And block, cut. Block. Special effects will show the body just sliding off. I don't know that might happen in real life. Ready? And lock. Raise the sword just a little bit at the beginning. And come up, rotates over, palm should be outward. Okay, for the weapon, right down the sheet. Let the left leg go back. And then you can be on guard position. Step back. <coughs> and this is done. Not slowly, not quickly, just kind of a natural speed because you're readying yourself. Then you come up quickly and block diagonal cut. Hey, 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 hey. Come back up, block, thrust, sand, cut, yeah. Hey. Back up and block, cut. Block. Okay, ready? 
The sword should be identical. Is that block? Did I cut? Yeah. Yes! Keep your vision straight ahead the whole time. Because that's where they were. And they're still there. They just pop a little because you just cut the head off. And step up, block. And thrust with the butt of the sword. Look behind you, thrust there. Look back the other way. Adjust your distance if you have trouble running into something. Slide forward. Make sure you have room. <coughs> There's a saying in the Akakura, the book of the Samurai. Akakura means hidden among the leaves. It's called a Christian title. <coughs> and it was written after the golden age of the Samurais. The Samurai was starting to become a bit of a decline. Subject to Zanshin, remaining awareness. They say, well, the same was tether even a roasted chicken. I mean, obviously, a roasted chicken is not going to run away, but tether it anyway. It has the whole concept of even after you think you've defeated your opponent, you do not take your eyes off of them. And after you've defeated a series of opponents, say, in this kata, you look as you're coming back. Under more opponents. And your Taekwondo cutters will have some more advanced cutters. They will have a final move, an offensive one, and they'll have two defensive blocks at the end. Starting with one, yeah. Okay? Block, look, block, look. There's also Zunction, remaining awareness. You look for other opponents. Ready? <clears throat> and salute. There's the weapon, draw it. Slowly, slowly. You know, speed in the cotton, but these movements go very slowly, very deliberately. This is where you and the weapon become one. So if you want to come back, you see the opponent. You draw back, ready. Look, look, go. Eyes open, focus. And step, lock, cut, yell. <laughs> Back. Lock, cut. Lock, cut. 
Next set. Guard, guard your head. Person drills in the equivalent of one step control spark. Now, the thing that has means that we're going to have to move very slowly in the beginning to develop control. I want to uh, too far apart. It's right here. <clears throat> and there's probably actually now everybody take the swords out. Hold it ready position that should cross.
we're going to move from here, drawing the sword up, and the step, and strike. Now, let's move slowly in the beginning. And of course, what are we going to do? Block, of course. So from here, you're simply going to block high. Everybody said block. And we all get strike. Let's move slowly the first time. Ready? Everybody understand who's defense and who's offense? Nasty injury, both sides attacked. Ready? Attacking side. Draw the sword back. And lunge forward, strike. Let's do that again. Ready? And draw the sword. Ready it and attack. Good. And again, ready? Attack. Trading off now. The mirror side will be the attackers. The bending side is now what was the attack. So off the side. Ready? Draw the sword. Ready it. And lunge. Attack. And close it. This is what I'm worried about. Both sides of the square. Okay. And again. Ready the sword. Ready the sword. Right back. And go. Attack. This arm. Make sure you keep the arms in clubs as you see. Ready? Again. Ready the sword and go. Slash. Our elbows in clubs. You'll see even the light contact we're making, which you need a very firm grip. The closer the arms are to the body, the more secure and powerful the movement is. Ready? And attack. Very good. All right, now. Going to go back to the other side attacking. Okay? And we're going to defend blocking sideways. Okay? I believe this side is defending. All right. This side will attack and we're going to slash for their uh, uh, left side will be good. Okay? They'll be slashing for their left. In other words, you'll pull the sword back, lunging. Flashing. Okay. Now, if they totally freak out, don't whack them with the sword. Okay. <laughs> ready? And ready the sword and slash. And again, ready? And slash. Get a little higher, Jonathan. Like you're trying to slash him through here. Essentially, severing the body at the spinal column from the intestines. Ready? And slash! Good. All right. Mirror side is now attacking. This side will also guard your left. And slash from here. Ready, and draw that. Ready the sword, and slash. Good. Again, ready the sword, and slash. Good. Ready the sword, and slash. Good. Ready the sword, slash. Very good. Okay. Now, we're familiar with those. We're going to add something to it this time. See who just defended. The weak ones over here. So this side will defend. But this time, you're going to go ahead and block. You're going to do the overhead strike here. We will block. Okay. As it comes down to here. Slash. We will do it. Blocking. Slash. Okay. Ready? So sword back. Draw the sword back to attack. And strike the top of the head, the head, and from there counter. And watch. You want to <clears throat> okay, we're here. You slash it in. The sword's going down this way. Oh, chop the head off. Ah. 
here. Here. Now, see, because when I'm here, she strikes. Now, she won't stop for you know. Okay. And this is where we're going to get. Okay. And you can touch their neck a little bit slower. You're not whack them on the neck. You can knock somebody cold in the garage artery. Mm -hmm. Watch them knock them out real quick just to show you. <laughs> He's a nose on Peacock. Yeah, that's great. Because his mom was like, you didn't do it, huh? <laughs> Ready? And pull the sword back. And block. And cut. Again, ready? And block. Cut. And again, draw the sword and block. Just as in your karate combinations, you know, we can do a lot of different ways. You can do this with several different ways, too. That was great. If I do things like this, which way? Okay. Always block with this part. Always here. This will break your sword. Okay. She's coming down to here. And that just happens to be one. The other way will work. Okay. <coughs> just, that's what we're doing. And consistency is good because we're going to keep each other. Ready? And lock. And come. Okay. Alright, other side is tacking. Ready? Draw the sword back. And strike. Lock. Okay, ready? You want to do it? Either side or all. That's fine. Ready? And strike. Again, ready? Strike. It's natural want to. Yeah. Yeah. Feels natural. Yeah, it should be that good. Two weeks of the plot, is it? Cool. Again, ready? And strike. Oh, I know it's not going to be fine. Try to keep that getting closer to your body. That's blocking. Defending side. This time we're going to block. We we'll block right side. Just to, that's what we need. So we're going to block. Start a downward cut through the hitch. And we do the starting basics. Block. We'll block the right. We'll cut. Ready? <coughs> and y'all, of course, are going to ready the sword. Okay. Yes. This side is attacking. All right. Is everybody clear? Yes. yes. Yeah. London, you're attacking. Justice. Yes. Well, okay. Now, this side is going to defend. Everybody clear on that? Yes, sir. You're going to defend here, right side. So, we will strike. Horizontal strike. Is that? Hey, Good. Good. Ready? And 
Okay, sword and slash lock cut. Yeah, just over your head. Straight over your head. Straight yes. down. <coughs> ready? <coughs> and pull the sword back. And cut. Lock. Cutter. And again, ready? And ready the sword for the attack. And block. Put your block up before somebody hits you. Ready? And cut. Counter. Good. And ready? Cut. Counter. Ready? Cut. Counter. One more. One more. And I'm just going to give the command to cut. And we got it. Cut. Ready. Let's have the other side defending now. So this side's attacking. And ready the sword. You're going to strike to their right side. Okay, like we just did. Everybody understand? Everybody understand which side you're defending? Yes, sir. Ready? And cut. Block All right. Ready? My fault is too close. And ready? Cut. Block counter. Straight down the floor. Straight down the floor. Cleaning the skull. Straight down. Well, these swords were. The Japanese sword is something that's can't even duplicate today. They're folded like well over a hundred thousand times. But folded, they they hammer the the iron flat, okay, and then they fold it back. And what that gives is it's unique thing that's very hard and sharp on the edge, and yet softer. So, okay. <coughs> anyway, they're incredible swords. How about you, Mr. Dow? Do you own real ones back there? Shoot, no, I'm not that wealthy. The least I've heard anybody own them for one of those. A friend of a keto master bought one for $1,500 and he said, I stole it from that. And others go, up, well, the most expensive, of course, is literally priceless. You can't buy them. Like, for instance, the Emperor's sword in Japan. Don't come up and offer me money, I'll take it. And others, you know. $50,000, $60,000, $100,000 are not unusual. And if you happen on one in a pawn shop someplace, you're going to snatch it up. Because a lot of World War II veterans brought back very old swords from World War II. Because the Japanese were still using these commander swords. They had actual military issue swords they used. But <coughs> if you were from a samurai family and you got drafted by the army, you took your family sword. <coughs> All right, ready? We're all done. And draw and cut. Center. Ready? Ready the sword and cut. Counter. Ready the sword. Cut. Counter. Almost cut your picky off. And ready the sword. Cut. Good. And ready the sword. Cut. Good, and in. Thanks, you too. Salute. Short break. Come right back. Fine. <coughs> How you doing?
Think about where you are. You run into the bags last time. Don't run into the mirrors either. But it doesn't go very far as front. Back. All right. Ready. When you uh, built it last time, did you put it up on YouTube or anything yet? No, it hasn't been rendered or anything yet. Okay. Ready? Lock. Sit 
back and cut. I cut it. And walk, step back, cut. And walk, cut. And if you watch it, experienced practitioner at the same point, it's all kind of blown together. And walk, cut. But for now, if you need to separate the two movements, I'm fine with that. Walk, cut. Walk, cut. Stance, right behind left, good angle on that sword. It's like your high block, empty handed karate, taekwondo. Yeah, yell's way. And got yell. Yes! Slowly look around. And just disembowel about four. Distances you need to, then anything the last time. Ready? Minimal coaching this time. Let's do this with practice. Ready? And salute. Put yourself in the mind of the now. Draw the weapon. Try to stay together. Begin.
progress so far. Back up a little bit. Have a seat with the way up there in front of me. I'm just going to, we're going to cool down a bit. I'm going to, No, these are not the ones that I was talking about that were folded over a hundred thousand times. Cost thirty twenty thousand dollars. These are replicas. And these were given to me as gifts by students and family. This is Satachi sword. Now this is like the katana, it has a little more curve to it than the forerunner. And it was meant to be used on horseback, as was the katana, of course. That you can see it had a little more curve to it. And even though it's not a samurai weapon, it's 440 stainless steel. <coughs> sharp enough to cut your head off. And this is a uh, more of a katana type of saber. I think this is called a dragon sword or dragon on oh. Imitation ivory. It's not real ivory. No elephants or walruses died to make this sword. It's plastic. And by comparison, I wanted to show you this is an authentic, this is an English cavalry saber. And I really need to work on it. Shined up, it was beautiful. I know it's was from the crest, and it was either made 1855 or 1955. I know that from the number stamp on it in December of 55. 1955 or 18. I tend to think 1955 because it doesn't seem to be that old. And it is rusted a bit and tarnished, as you would expect, but you know, even at 55, that might be 60, almost 60 years old, so it's still old. Now, the difference between this and the tongues, this was meant as a one-handed weapon. Okay? However, you can grip it here because this part is not sharp. And it's not on the swords, the real swords, because so you can grip them if you have to have to. Okay? I wanted to show you what some of the steel ones look like. And eventually, practicing this kata with a steel sword is very beneficial because some of you I know have rough. And if you're careful, it's always a lot of fun to practice with them. And it's good to use the steel versions, the weight of it is good. If you go to a tournament to perform it, switch to aluminum. That's what it is, the aluminum is much lighter. And all those great samurai movies you see, that started with um, Seven Samurai on. Poster up there, off of Great samurai movies, they all use aluminum swords because they're moving so quickly. So if you're going to perform this kind of tournament, switch your aluminum sword, set yourself up. If you want to practice it, practice with a steel sword to get used to the weight. Wait, what do you do? It, like if you unsheath it, what do you do with the, the sheet? Do you just kind of well, tournament? You wouldn't actually put it in a sheet. I've seen people, I, I saw a kind of Ewan do it, like a very kind of Connie did this once and she actually used a sheath when she was cast it inside. The the but you could do the kata without but, the sheath. Got it. Okay. Yeah. If you did have the sheath, you would just have to, after you've done it, you know. But, which is kind of a nice gesture too. You know, it's like you took the sheath to the side, you would use this sword and die trying. I would suggest doing this kind of without the shoe. It's kind of symbolic. It had a functional place of real warfare. But you know, kind of wasn't kind of strange. You just get in the way, actually. I feel 
so much. <clears throat> All right. Taking the Quincy breaths first, or prepared before the meditation. Another small thing. Let your tongue rest right in the roof of your mouth. The fact is, on a very physiological level, if your tongue's not moving, you're not talking to yourself. Your tongue actually, if you're, if you're, you're verbalizing things internally, your tongue will make little bitty movements. That's the response to that. If your tongue is in the roof of your mouth, you tend not to do that. I know there's a whole kind of mystical thing about how this makes the flow of chi in your body click. I don't know if it does that or not. I, people always ask me, does chi exist? No. I really had no idea. Okay. I mean, I do things and I you know, meditate, increase it, I increase my key to karate and sportsmanship. But whether it really exists or not, I have no idea. You know, I think it can, I, there tends to be a lot of evidence for it because even the AMA recognizes active pressure and active puncture. I mean, you know, and those are based on the flow of key. And I've heard people say that's only because the endorphins that are aroused through the needles and pressure points. But I don't know. I have an open mind about it. I feel like you know, I can't see it, I can't touch it, but I feel it sometimes. More of a debate on key later. First, the cleansing breath, expand the abdomen, contract. Yes, Kevin's waiting.